All right, everyone, we are here with a champion breakdown slash gameplay video of Hulkling. Um, been a while since I've done a CCP video, but no vacations this month, and it seemed right to get back to it. I may eventually do a video for May's champs, but for now we're going to focus on June's champs. So enjoy this level up video as I go over a few boxes that Hulkling checks, checks with his kit. Um... So first off, he's Poison and Shock Immune. Uh, that dual immunity is pretty unique. Uh, if we're looking at War, it means he can cover Path 9 um, with some focused gameplay as he can take the Incinerate Poison Path being Poison Immune and he can take the Shock Bleed Path being Shock Immune. Um, he's also immune to Power Drain, Steel, and Burn. Now, this isn't entirely unique to him. Terax has it when he's facing Metal Champs, and King Groot has the Drain and Burn immunity, but not the Steel. Um, and one thing I should focus or point out with both this Power immunity and this Poison Shock immunity is that he actually ramps up his shape-shifting um, charges a lot faster when he's facing a matchup that basically you know, points out or, like, abuses these immunities. So uh, we'll get into the shape-shifting charges later, but just know that that ramps him up quite a bit faster than if he was just facing a fight that doesn't have these immunities coming into play. He reduces heal block duration by two seconds, which isn't that big of a deal. It's more defensive. His attack increases which with each unique buff, so he has his own... Um, unique buffs and if you're attacking there's really three unless you get punched in the face then there's four if he's defending there's really I guess there's a potential for all four as well as long as he hits you in the face um, but one thing to consider here is the Odin buffs so um, not the uh, uh, aptitude buff but the other two the shock and the indestructible one that prevents uh, a damage cap outside of a special three those would also increase his attack rating um, so he has easy access to three to four buffs and then he's got two more he can add on um, and then he's got an unblockable buff now the reason I point that out as a box checked um, is that with the war meta currently going on and the unique synergy with uh, Kitty and Tigra unblockable is very valuable um, Misty Knight is starting to come to light as a very, very useful champ with her feature crystal going on. In the fact that she can maintain unblockable pretty much an entire fight while maintaining guaranteed crit. And then the synergy that I mentioned with Tiger and Kitty has been used in war quite often, especially after unstoppable armor, just because Kitty can build to 10 prowess and then be unblockable anytime she phases, which creates easy openings for a lot of tough nodes. So we cannot overlook the fact that Hulkling has possibly an easy access unblockable. And we're gonna take a look at that unblockable and see how easy it is to access that um, because how quickly you can get to that and utilize it is going to matter offensively for him. He definitely looks like a pain defensively, um, even though he has a counter to being nullified in which his indestructible and his unblockable become passives, I still feel like he's gonna generate a lot of mystic dispersion. So be very easy for a lot of mystic defend or attackers, but also um, neutralize is becoming more common in the game. So we've, we've already got somewhat the counters to him uh, when it comes to defense. But let's go ahead and take a look at a few facts about his abilities. So he's got a reduced offensive combat power rate, and I believe that's alleviated by the fact that when he gains a shape-shifting charge or buff, he actually gains 7% um, power. So there's a way to kind of just like still build power quickly. It's just not going to be from hitting the opponent. Um, special 1 is more so a focus that if you don't have a fight that really plays to his immunities, it's a faster way to build shape-shifting charges. Um, special 2 is the real damage dealer. Uh, if you manage to throw that attack while unblockable, then you've, get, you've got double fury activated there, and it's like almost a 6,000 attack rating at a rank 3 6 star. Um, and you've got your aptitude buffs and all this other stuff that just increases your attack rating as well. 
And then special three is just for longer fights. It's in, it's basically a way of making certain buffs, if you target those buffs, indefinite through the entire fight. Now the duped ability, um, we're going to look at gameplay here, but the duped ability, you just really have to wage or gauge whether or not you need the extended duration for Fury, um, and if you needed the increased duration for Bulwark. Um, but it also increases block penetration, so for defense, I could see it being kind of more of a pain if he's at max SIG. Alright, so looking at his kit, the main question I had was how easy is it to trigger the unblockable as you're reaching special 2 and then dropping the special 2. And the answer to that that you're going to see through this video, and this is only my second attempt playing him trying out um, the special 2, is that it's actually quite easy. And th these are fights where shape-shifting charges aren't going nuts, so we don't have them insanely available as we would in a fight where he's immune to something, whether it be power-related or the shock poison or both. Um, and you saw there, it hits quite hard. So double fury, some aptitude buffs, we don't even have the Odin pre-fights to increase attack rating. Um, what I did find was that you don't want to start trying to build the pierce buffs, which um, are actually converting shape-shifting charges by hitting into the opponent's block. You don't want to start building those to the 5 cap that gives you the unblockable. Um, when you have the special 2, you want to do it right before you're about to cross the threshold for special 2. And it's not hard at all. Um, when I was waiting to do it when I had special 2, I was actually getting pushed due to the passive power gain to special 3, and we're not getting those double furies. And then, for talking about his SIG ability and whether or not we need that, that extended duration, there's enough time after the special 2 to bait out a special attack and then do a full combo with the double fury. Um, and if we're looking at this from a war perspective with cosmic boosts, you're going to get a lot back from that special 2 hit to the point where you could probably throw a second special 2 while unblockable and build those furies up again. Um, so maybe looking at this if you're at the top tier uh, with your roster, he's not going to overshadow Hercules and Cosmic Ghost Rider, but he's definitely going to be a great cosmic option for easy openings for a lot of newer and younger accounts. And then some noteworthy worthy, um, synergies, synergy with Wiccan, Stun Immune, when he at least has three Pierce buffs, which is huge. And then he's got a nice synergy with Toad, which actually, in my opinion, might help out Toad a lot more, refreshing that slow debuff when they have five poisons at minimum and you add another. But yeah, um, final thoughts. You know, the easy access unblockable is beneficial and really stands out as good utility as proven by uh, the Kitty Pride and Tigra synergy um, and then uh, it's also proven by Misty with her easy maintaining of unblockable with guaranteed crit but I think with Hulkling it shows that Misty could use a big damage dealer while unblockable um, outside of having to rotate from special 2 to special 1 and it just being a straight special 2 attack. Um, he's definitely probably going to stand out as a, uh, a good two-way um, champion for battlegrounds as well. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hit subscribe, like, follow, and share, and I will catch you guys at the next one.